Hello everyone and welcome to another video where we're going to explore the use of OSL maps or nodes into Studio Max. And uh, after the initial video where we explore the use uh, of the OSL bitmap lookup and the Uber bitmap to bring bitmaps into Studio Max, uh, this video we're going to see how we can tweak and adjust those bitmaps using the color correction nodes. I think you'll probably agree with me when I say that the color correction node is one of the most important nodes they have in Studio Max uh, because it gives you the flexibility of doing minor adjustments and tweaks inside Studio Max without having to go to another third party software like Mari, uh, Substance Painter or even Photoshop to uh, adjust the texture, export it, bring it inside Max again and see if you need to repeat the same process. Now, in terms of the color correction node that comes by default with Studio Max, the legacy color correction node, as you can see in my screen, the things that this node allows you to do is to work with the channels, uh, creating a monochrome image, for example, or even invert image. But then in terms of color, you can do some hue shift, you can work with saturation. And in lightness, by default, you have the standard, which gives you the option to work with the brightness and the contrast. And all of these uh, settings, um, are, they are available with the OSL color correction nodes. The only thing that at the moment that you don't have with the color correction nodes is this section here, the advanced uh, section. This is the section that I use when sometimes I have to tweak the amount of red, green and blue that I have on a bitmap. It's not necessarily something that I do quite often. It's more when the white balance of the image is a little bit off and I, I come here to, to tweak it and to change it. But again, this is something you can do with another OSL node. So it's not a major loss that you're going to have by not having this in the OSL color correction nodes. So if I select the OSL color correction nodes, um, if you're looking for these nodes, you will find under the maps, OSL, and then after the section values, you have the bitmap lookup, which is the one we saw on the last video, the bitmap random tiling, and then you have the color correction node. Now, in terms of color correction, uh, as you can probably see here, you have all the settings that you have on a legacy node with a couple of more additions. One of the things that I really like on the OSL color correction node is this initial section here, which allows you to bypass or control the overall effect of this node. So give you an idea how this section here works, I'm just going to increase my gamma to something like 2.2. And then the bypass, I think is quite explanatory what it does. You just bypass the node completely. You're just going to ignore all the settings that it did. And this is something uh, useful when you are doing materials and you just want to see how your color correction is affecting the bitmap. Right? So having this option where you can just turn on and off, it really helps you to quickly see that. And another thing I want to point out is the fact that since you're working with OSL nodes and you're working with the physical material, the Autodesk physical material, as you can see, all of these changes, you can see them in a the viewport. So this will help you even doing look development without rendering. Although it's better if you just, you do the rendering so you can see it in action. Um, you can visually see something in the viewport and make your decisions quite fast by using OSL. Now, the, the other bit, which I think it's really useful and practical, in particular when you have to do art direction for your materials, is the overall effect. So let's say you are getting some feedback about this material. Um, you did the color correction that you wanted to do. So for example, uh, I have my camera at 2.2 and I want to do my brightness at 1.5. I may go to color and I do my situation is 1.5, for example. And, you know, the person who's giving you feedback may say, okay, Alex, this looks good, but I would turn down uh, 20%. Now, 20% of uh, brightness 1.5 or camera 2.2 or saturation 1.5, you can calculate that, but you don't want to work in that way. You just want to reduce this effect by 20%. So what you can do is you can use the overall effect. So by going here and change this from one to 0 0.8, you are you know, working with that less 20%. You may get back and say, well, let's try 50%. So 0 0.5 will give you 50%. I think this really helps you to understand that having this overall effect, it gives you way more control um, and allows you to be more creative when you're doing look development. 
and also it's easy for you to incorporate any comments that you may get uh, in terms of how this color correction is affecting your bitmap. So I think this is one of the key uh, the key points of using the OSL color correction node. It's the amount of control that you can have by using the overall effect and also by using the bypass. Okay, so if I reset to the values, I want to show you the next section, which is apply only to U range. What I'm going to do, I'm going to select this option. Um, I'm going to click effect U. And literally what I'll be doing with this color selector is selecting a specific color from the depth map that I'm using. And that's the reason why I'm using this bitmap. So the changes that I'm going to do, they are quite obvious. So if I click OK, nothing happens. And the reason why nothing happens is because I'm not doing any color correction to this bitmap. But if I go to, yeah, let's say, to my gamma and I change to 1.5, for example, or if I go to my color and I do a U shift to 0.5, you can see how all the color correction that I'm doing, all the settings that I'm changing, they're not be applied to the entire bitmap. They're just being applied to that specific U that I selected. So this is really cool and really, really practical because if I wanted to do something like this with my legacy color correction node, I would probably have to pick this bitmap, go to Photoshop, do this kind of selection in Photoshop, create a mask, bring that mask inside Studio Max, and, and try to do the same thing with perhaps a composite node. But by having the OSL color correction node, I can actually do that on the fly just using one single node. And to show you, so if I remove the apply only to U range, you can see how my entire bitmap is affected. And if I apply it again, you can see how just that section it's it's being applied and this this happens if i for example uh, select a completely just reset again to default if i select a completely different u like this one again the same principle applies if i change my gamma to 0 0.2 for example you see only that bit is affected if i change my u shift to 0 0.5 you can see how just specific areas of my image are being affected so again Another really strong point why OSL, first of all, is so cool. And secondly, it helps you so much when you're doing look development, creating materials, making your workflow way smoother and more efficient. Now, again, let me uh, reset to default values. Um, and then in terms of the next uh, settings that you have available, you have the channel mapping, uh, which allows you to control channels, remove it, inverse it. This is, to be honest, something that I don't use quite often. Then in terms of uh, the brightness section, you have the usual normal things that you have from the color correction node. It allows you to change the brightness, allows you to change the contrast. You can also change the gamma. And I think this is a, a good opportunity for me to show you how you can use the color correction uh, map to create a roughness or a glossiness map for your material. It's not something that necessarily I recommend you to do, but there are situations where you don't have the time to create a proper roughness map um, and you can just use whatever you have. So let me show you how you can use the color correction node to create that roughness map. If I just copy this here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to select the, the red channel and I'm going to connect to my input. You see it becomes black and white. And now if I want to use this as my roughness, one thing that I have to do, I have to take into account that my base color is using a camera of 2.2. Anything that is data, and by data I mean the maps that you're going to use to roughness, uh, to bump, to normal, to displacement, they are data. So they need to work with a gamma of 1.0. Because I'm working with a gamma of 2.2, as you can see here on the bitmap lookup, I'm using a 2.2. What I have to do is I have to say that this map here is using a gamma of 2.2. And then what I want, I want to do the inverse of this gamma. So I want to go to 1.0 and I click the inverse gamma and that's it. So there you have your roughness map correctly. Uh, which then you can just connect to the specular roughness. Uh, doing this, it's way more practical than you just uh, copying uh, this map and just connecting here. Because if you don't do the inverse camera, you see how this is affecting your roughness and making your material way shinier than it's supposed to be. So the proper way to do, again, you select one of the nodes. It can be the red, green and blue. Connect to inputs make sure the gamma is 2.2 and then you invert the gamma and there you have a proper map for your roughness or even for your bump for example so the next section that i want to show you is this color section uh, again what i'm going to do for this one here i'm going to reset the values and one of the things i want to show you in particular is uh, for you to use the tint 
And also, when you're doing saturation, what's the difference using the value or using the luminance? So again, to show you this, I'm going to uh, select this color, the orange color, and I'm going to show you how you can do the U-Shift. This is, again, the U-Shift is practical when sometimes you have to uh, correct the texture. So for example, in, in some cases, wood textures, they can be maybe too yellow. So by using the U-Shift, you can get back to that red or brown look, which is more close to what it looks like in reality. So it's a very practical tool when you have to do some subtle U-Shifts. The value goes from 0 to 1, so you have to really sometimes use values from something like 0 0.05, for example. And you can see how 0 0.05 goes from an orange to a yellow color. So very subtle values. It's going to have like a big impact on how the texture looks like. But if I go back to my value of 0 0.5 and if I increase my saturation to crazy value like 4, for example. So this is how it looks because at the moment the saturation is being applied and is using the value to, to give me this color. But if I don't want to have such a strong effect, one thing you can do, you can change from value to luminance. And you can see you still have a quite vibrant color but not so dark. That's because I'm using saturation as luminance instead of value. It allows you to be a little bit more subtle in the way that you uh, use your saturation. So now that I show you how to work with the color, um, one thing I just wanted to show you before we move to the next one is the tint. Uh, the tint, it, it works in a similar way. It allows you to apply a specific color that you may select to the, to the texture. So if I do something like a very strong blue, nothing happens because the tint strength is at zero. But as soon as you start to increase this, you can see how this is being... I believe it's being multiplied on top of the texture, so you, that's why you have such a strong contrast. So the tint is uh, is a good option when you want to get that right look just by picking the color and just by multiplying it on top of the the bitmap. So let me reset to default values, um, and then another two things that you're probably going to find useful is the output tint uh, and then the clamp result. The clamp result I would leave at zero one unless you are doing color correction to AGI maps. If you're doing to AGI maps, I will not get the result. Otherwise, the AGI map is not going to have the full dynamic range to properly light your scene. So just keep that in mind because the the color correction now is going to clamp the values. So you, if you forgot to untick this option, you may find that your Asia map looks a little bit weird. It's probably because you need to tick off this option here. Now, in terms of the output tint, kind of does what the tint uh, option that you have in column. The only thing, the only difference is that it's going to apply a color to the shadows, a color to the midtones, and a color to the highlights. Now, in terms of highlights, I don't have you know many highlights in, in this bitmap, but I have a lot of midtones and I have shadows. So to see this in action, I can go to something like red and you see how the darkest values on my bitmap are being changed to red. And then if I go to my midtones and I go the opposite, if I go to something like blue, for example, you see how this is being applied to, to the midtones. Obviously you're going to have a like a blend between the shadows and the midtones and even the highlights. I mean, I don't have many highlights here, but if I go to something like perhaps like a green, you still see how the highlights are being to take into consideration. So this may be something that you, you need, who knows? Um, but in some situations, it's quite practical that your darkest point in the image it needs to be a different color. Sometimes it's just a matter of like having the same color but a little bit lighter and you can do this we're using the shadows midtones and uh, the highlights and then w one thing you, you you can also control is the what is considered the mid gray so for example if i go to 0 0.2 and 0 0.5 i am you know moving my midpoint up and down and this obviously is going to affect how the texture looks and with this uh crazy results i think uh, help you to understand how the color correction nodes uh, works is an extremely powerful node uh, it's one of the nodes that i use constantly and i think you you can see clearly that all the options that you have with the color correction nodes uh, the legacy one you have with the osl node and uh, the more you use it the more you realize how powerful this uh, simple node it is and the big impact it can have into your workflow and help you to be uh, more efficient. So I I hope you find this uh, short video useful. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. 
Uh, again, let me know if you have been any specific uh, aspect of creating materials covered on the next couple of videos, and I'll try my best to include it. So thank you so much for watching and take care.